today on Divorce Court. Kendrell does not understand that in order for us to go on into our future, he's gonna have to change. I'm not perfect, but at the end of the day, I want us to be together and I'm here to do whatever to make it work out. I have military obligations and when I'm out of town, I cannot trust him whatsoever. The cheating and the trust, I feel like it's not that serious. There is a chance that he might have gotten another girl pregnant. I don't really don't know, and I really want to know about this baby. If I find out today that he did father a child outside of our relationship, it is over. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Darnisha Adams and Kendrell David. The two of you have been together for four years. You're 22, he's 23. You uh, are in love with each other, want to get married, but not sure if it's a good idea. Uh, so you've come to me. You have no children. You have come to me to ask my advice, tell me a little about your circumstances. I have given you my compatibility test. You've given me your marriage license with permission to tear it up should I think your union is ill-advised. Ms. Adams, I'm going to start with you. Why are we here today? We are here today because me and Kendrell are just no longer on the same page. Okay. And I need him to understand today that I will not take care of him his whole life. Mm -hmm. He tends to harp on a pact that we made concerning school and our financial situation. What was the pact? Um, he's further along in school than I am, so I, the, the pact was that he'll continue school and finish out school while I already had a apartment and everything because I need to have everything in my name. My mama didn't raise a fool fool, like, mm -hmm. you know, but I had a foundation and if ever he messed up, I could just put him out. But. That was our pact, that I would take care of the home front while he, he finished school. school. Mm -hmm. But we also threw in there when he gets refund checks or any type of income that he will assist me right. with the um, finances right. because I can't do it all by myself. Even right. though I maintain it, you mm -hmm. know, some help would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. So every time, like, he gets a check or something, I'll ask him, hey, can you, the bill is this much. Do you mind, you know, throwing me something towards this? And I, sometimes, you know, I say it in a way that's, I, I wouldn't say it's a setup per se, but I'll say, oh, the bill is $60 this month. It's gonna be $60 next month, like, just to see if he'll give me more mm -hmm. than what I'm asking for. And what happens? Uh, he'll spend his check on a game system or some clothes or, you know, he'll give me the $60. He, he, but, 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 yeah, he won't go any further than that, and the rest of yeah. that is his money to do as he please. Mr. David, do, do, do you care to uh, disagree with that version of events? I can't disagree on that. Uh, that pack, though, uh, that's, a, that's a big thing to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Her support is number one. Mm -hmm. uh, she, we came to agreement that I'll, I'll finish school and I'll right. take care of her right. after I graduate, because right. I have things lined up right. where uh, I'll be able to be the bread feeder. I'll uh -huh. feed the whole household. Gotcha. But she's... <laughs> she but she's complaining. She, she made an agreement. Yeah, she, she said, look, agreement. let me go to school. I will, I will, I will have you while you go to school. It's and open. now she's complaining that that's what's going on. Yeah. And just, that, that, that's what, I'm, that's that's exactly what she's saying. On. But he's also forgetting the rest of the pack. Okay, tell when, me what that is. When he does get his refund check or any type of income, he will help me pay some of the utilities. And those are the things now, I complain about. Okay, now, Mr. David, we get, we understand what the pact is. Yes. But she's your woman. Yes. You know what I mean? Is there economic trouble that you get into and you say, well, it's not my job, and you spend your money on other things? Okay, it was a situation where I had a little extra money left over from my refund check. Mm -hmm. I, I gave half on the rent, but I did... <laughs> I went out and spent my money on the Xbox. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I, I should be able to treat myself. I'm in college. I'm mm -hmm. out here stressing, going to class. Uh, we, we, we had to pack. Now, listen, you don't talk about I'm out here stressing, I, going so, to class. It's, You're it's looking at a woman who's been, been through a couple of schools, all right? I'm, you know what I'm saying? I know what it is. Yes. There weren't any Xboxes <laughs> in my day, but, but come on. <laughs> come on now. I messed up on it. Okay. Say. I did. I, I tried to make it better, but she was still... Do you get mad and stay mad? I don't get mad and stay mad for the simple fact of... I, I just... I just accept it for what it is. Like, okay, he basically... I don't want to say failed that test, but 
I like, I am very strong in looking ahead. Mm -hmm. So you say that you're going to take care of me in the long run, which I do believe you because you're going to have a good job. However, if you don't know how to take care of money now where you have smaller mm -hmm. checks, then how yeah. are you going to manage what I'm managing now? Gotcha. I gotcha. What else are you concerned about? Um, I'm concerned about his cheating. He does that a lot. A lot? He does that a lot. Um, he usually does it around when I'm, I'm away from my military obligations. Is that accurate? On her behalf, it's accurate. Okay. But on my behalf, it's the communication factor. Uh, when she's out on obligation, military uh, obliga obligations, when I try to reach out to her on if I have a situation at school, uh, if I need help with something, she'll brush it off. And I'm just like, why, why, why do that? I'm trying to, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to get your input on the problems that I have, and you're just uh, brushing it off. Like there was a time when um, I called her about a test, and like I wanted to express to her that I got a good grade and everything. She was just like, all right, let me call you back. Uh, I got this obligation that my commander wants me to uh, see. I'm like, okay, so I'm waiting on the call, waiting on the call. Um, 20 minutes went by, 40 minutes went by. I'm just like, all right, let me try to call it back. So I called her back. She didn't pick up. And that's, that's, consec that's on a consecutive basis. So it always happens. So for me, I reach out to other people to try to get an understanding. Well, on what parts of your body do you use? <laughs> I mean, uh, I like to, I like to talk. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot. Uh -huh. I talk to a lot of people. Have you cheated on her while she was out? Okay, it was an instance where she may have walked in on me when I was uh, getting a little bit of uh, oral pleasure. That was it wasn't. Let, let us discuss what is cheating and if that applies. Do you want to know what he said he considers cheating? I bet you do, and I'm going to tell you. He said if he wants to do a sexual act and you're not doing it, he believes he could do it enough with another woman, and that does not constitute cheating. Exactly. He actually wrote this down on a exactly. piece of paper. So, Ms. Adams, Mr. David contends that you walk admits that you walked in on him while a woman was giving him pleasure orally. He says that that's not really... It wasn't a big deal. It's not cheating. It would, tell me about your view, point of view on his exploits. The time he is referring to is when I was away for roughly three months and... I was not aware that I would be leaving as early as I did, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to tell him that because, you know, we don't... I want to surprise him. You right. know, sometimes you like to do something right. to shake it up. So I already put him out by this time. So he was at his sister's house. Why had you put him out? I put him out because I caught him texting a friend of mine and they were basically not talking how friends should talk. Gotcha. Especially gotcha. if it's my friend. Gotcha. And what he likes to do is he likes to save them under different names or, like, food place names or right. something like, yeah. totally outlandish that he'll think that I wouldn't know right. what right. it is. So, um, I did go through his phone. Yep, I did. She had At no right doing that, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. It was in my house. I, I can do it. And... She don't pay my bill, so... Do uh, I? <laughs> Mr. Mr. David... Yes. I'm going to readjust you for it in a little while. Not right now, but I'm going to readjust you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Adams, so tell me about what you walked in on and what other evidence of cheating you have. Um, when I went to his sister's house, um, she opened the door, she let me in, and she was like, oh, yeah, he's in the back studying. And so I went to his room. I lost my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is going on? Like, who is this? What are you doing? What is going on? Now... I was taught go after the man. I wasn't taught go after the woman. There you go. So I went after him while she got her little. Well, stuff not together. go after him. I should. I, I'm not signing off to go after him. You be angry with the man, but no hands on. But go ahead. I didn't put hands on him. I was just, you know, mm -hmm. real firm and strong. Like, what is you doing? Well, what do you have going on? And she, you know, ran out, and he was just like, "You're never here." Basically, he tried to flip the script on me, saying, "You and you're not here." Okay. So is, 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 is that your? Your, yes. your defense? Because I, I did 
read your compatibility test. I usually go to this later on, but I got to do this now. Do you want to know what he said he considers cheating? I bet you do, and I'm going to tell you. He said <laughs> if he wants to do a sexual act and you're not doing it, he believes he can do it with another woman, and that does not constitute cheating. Exactly. He actually wrote this down on a exactly. piece of paper. Exactly. He never says nothing crazy like that to me. Mr. David, explain yes, your theory of, of, of cheating to me. All right, I feel like um, if she's not satisfying my needs in, in the bedroom like I expect, then if I go out and do the, the things that she's not doing with another girl, it's not cheating because we're practicing something that me and her did, but not really practicing that, if that makes sense. What needs can you have when I give you shelter? When I am home, I cook for you. I make sure the house is clean when you lay your clothes around the house. But you're not emotionally I, there, though. Emotionally? In what ways is she not emotionally there? So, I play basketball sometimes. I got a little mm -hmm. intramural league. Uh, I want to call her about my day uh, and tell her, like, how many, po how many points I scored. <laughs> like, if I'm crossing people up, something like that, she, she's not there for any type of support. And it's just like, why, why even bother trying to reach out to you? The game he's referring to, I work. I am Don't. a referee at that same, in that same you, place. I'm the referee. So I was you, on the other side of the court working. But you, didn't ask, you didn't ask how I did, though. So. It's kind of hard when I had two technical fouls to deal with. I well, can't. I'm talking about after the fact, too. We be driving the same car. Mr. Davis, she... you look, you're coming up so light and so tired <laughs> I mean... and so trifling and so tacky, I'm going to stop you for your own good. <laughs> Do you know for a fact that Mr. David is the father of that baby? From what I hear from him, no. But then again, you can't really trust everything that come out of his mouth. I can't. There was a, another significant cheat that Mr. David engaged in. Why don't you tell me about that, Ms. Adams? While I was away again on a military obligation, because he says I'm not there for him emotionally, but I'm always working, I'm busy, I'm in school also. So I have stuff to do also. But um, I received a message in my social media, and it was basically a girl saying, hey, I just wanted to let you know that I am pregnant and it's by Kendrell, so you need to leave us alone because we are going to be a family. And when I took it to him and I said, hey, like, this is the same girl I caught you with. Like, I thought you said you weren't talking to her anymore. And he said, well, I don't talk to her anymore. She's lying. She's just trying to break us up. Um, you can go through my phone and see that I have not been talking with her. And I made him block her off Instagram, so. Mr. Mr. David? Your response? Look, every time that uh, I reach out to other people, uh, it's because she's not there. I try to get their input on our relationship. But they're not in the relationship I'm, with us. I know that, but, I, but for me it's... Input! A, yes, their input. So to make our relationship How do you better, make a baby with input? <laughs> <laughs> you put something. Stop, because we already see what's happening here. Why are you here on a before your vows with the guy who says the things that he does and does the things that he does? Why are you that valueless? Because we met so long ago and we have been through so much and we put so much work. He was not always like this. He was not. He used to be supportive. He was good. He was all that. It's when we got to college and we made this pact that he was like, okay, well, you know, he, he stopped working this hard. He, he lost that drive that I used to love about him. But we also put into work and I don't have time to be going out and starting over when I already had my foundation set. Oh, Ms. Adams, Ms. Adams, Ms. Adams, Ms. Adams. Do you know for a fact that Mr. David is the father of that baby? From what I hear from him, no. But then again, you can't really trust everything that come out of his mouth, I can't. If it is his baby, what you gonna do? If it is his baby, I cannot stay with him. If you betrayed my trust while I was out trying to make our home, mm -hmm. then I can't be with you. You understand that, Mr. David? I hear what she's saying, but... Shh. Listen. Say something intelligent, please. I'm, I'm gonna say something very intelligent. <laughs> listen. Your Honor, listen to me. We've 
we've been together for a long time. And I feel like if a baby is, is a stepping stone where she can't actually go forward with this relationship, I feel like she really didn't, she really didn't love me like she said she did. It's did. not my baby. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that, but. Ms. Adams, we got this man to take a DNA test and we're gonna all know what the DNA test is and then we're gonna talk about what everybody needs to do from here on. I'm mad and I'm mad in advance. You gave me the speech about we put so much time in it and I don't have time to start over. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. <laughs> you haven't even started yet. I didn't meet the man I married till I was 27. Didn't date between the time I was 24 and 27 at all. So all that time in, that isn't true, okay? You're a neuroscience major in the Army? Good God! <laughs> over there. I hope you meant what you said. Because that other woman has his baby. Oh. It's his. I want you to look at it. I want you to put it next to the phone so the next time you think you may call him, you don't do it. <laughs> He's looking for support like he's 12. He wants you to feed him, clothe him, house him, uh, pay all of his bills, and then he wants you to cheer for him and applaud him and stop what you're doing working for him so you can say, good job, Johnny, good job, Johnny. He's not doing a good job. He's doing you wrong. He's using you. He got you all tied up, and he does whatever he wants. He can have do anything he wants with any woman if you haven't done it. I'm and sorry. even if you have done it, you're gonna do it with another woman. He's not a good dude. That's He's like, not yeah. trustworthy. So He's not I'm faithful sorry. to you. He's not good to you. He's I'm... not right. He's not... I would Man, talk I'm to you, sorry. but you're not... But I don't care if you're sorry, because what you said in here says to me that you feel that you deserve every rotten thing you did. You feel that she needs to give you everything and you need to give her nothing in return. And he's given you nothing. A huge bucket full of nothing but sorrow and angst. And he's not remorseful. And his entire structure is about me, 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 but, me. And yeah. if you don't see that, Madam Neuroscience Major, you know, get with it and get gone. Your Honor. Yeah. Your Honor. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Get with yeah. it and get gone. Can, get a moral compass. I, this matter is adjourned. Say, no. Yeah. The judge opened up the result and told me I knew. I, I knew, and that was the end for me. Like, I meant what I said when I said that it would be over and it is definitely, definitely over now. I know I deserve a woman like her. I'm not a bad person at all, and she knows that. I have a good heart. I may do stupid things at times, but I'm man enough to actually make myself better, and I would do, I would do anything. I just want, I just want her back. I just really want her back. Today on Divorce Court. I feel like I'm in second place with his family all the time. She can argue the different, but I know where my heart lies. They start too much drama. They always ask for money. They're very needy. He's like a personal ATM for them. You know, certain people ain't gonna change. And I'm not dumb. I'm not finna say they're gonna do it for me. I don't wanna throw away 11 years if we don't have to. I still wanna try to continue on working out our relationship but I don't want to go if it hurts you, or hurt me, or the kids. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Jamie Burnett and Kevin Burnett, Mr. and Mrs. Burnett. You have been married for 11 years and you have two children together. However, at this juncture in your marriage, you are in trouble, so you came to see me, Mrs. Burnett. I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today? 
Well, Your Honor, we're here because I believe totally in the scriptures. And the Bible says to love your wife as God loves the church. Yes. And yes, also, leave, forsake your mother and father and cling to your wife. Uh-oh. And that is where we draw the line because my husband clings to his family instead of his wife. Oh. And the entire church said, <laughs> amen. amen. Mr. Burnett, do you understand what she's talking about? I understand, Your Honor, but I don't quite agree a whole hundred percent what she's saying. Uh, with my family, me and my family, we come from two different lives, you know, and with, with she was raised different. I wasn't, fortunately, I wasn't raised with, you know, being around my family growing up. Uh-huh. So I was raised like foster home, boys home. I was moved around a lot. Right. So, you know, as I got, got older, you know, me and my family, we always had a bond that was kind of mm -hmm. like unbreakable. But I do believe what she's saying, like, for us, my wife come first, and I believe I put her first. Like, mm -hmm. you know, she got things that my family don't mind, you know, yeah. money, bank accounts, stuff that yeah, yeah. they don't have. Mrs. Burnett, give me a little relational history. Tell me a bit about how you got together. Uh, we got together in 2006, and um, I was in church uh, right. singing in the choir, you uh -huh. know. Young, seen a young man, you know, we started to date and um, we hit it off from there. We, um, we believed in no sex before marriage. Right. Um, you know, all the great principles of what a marriage could be. Uh, we believed in that. Uh, I was apostolic. Um, <laughs> Why do you look at me like I that? believe I was tricked, Your Honor. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I say, Mr. Burnett, no, 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 not by her. Why do you believe you were tricked? Because, look, when we got married, like, a lot, of, a lot of people from the church were saying, okay, you know, you want to get married, you don't want to be, you know, living in sin or feeling right. like the fire is burning. So we kind of, like, rushed into it, but not tricked by my her, not, not saying her per se, but I believe so for in the religion part of it because we don't follow that same religion to this day. So it's like, I feel like once I realized the religion of it, I'm like, I could have stayed who I was. I was... I was right. Right. I was I was already doing good. I so wasn't what no you're bad telling person. me is you feel like you rushed in the marriage in order to preclude you from sinning in the eyes of the church that you were in. I mean, uh, yeah, right. yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't, just... <laughs> it wasn't just because of that. I know, but I but yeah, yeah, I'm a man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it was influenced course. by that. I mean, she's beautiful. You know, it, so. Influenced by that. So, Mrs. Burnett, yeah. do, do you disagree with that at all? That that um, the the fear of sinning, should you not join as husband and wife, uh, did speed up your nuptials a bit? I do believe that, Your Honor. I do. And another thing, Your Honor, I want to say this in all respect, uh, because when we dated, she left for a while. She was, we was engaged. So it was tough to have, like, this long-distance fiancé. Right, went, I right. was in our home state, and she was in another state. What'd you leave for? What were, what were you doing? Like I said, I, I was in the choir. I sang a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I was always on tour on the road right. um, for the gospel. Yeah. And that was just... I was very focused. I was in school at the time, and I just didn't have time for a relationship. He was my first love and my first relationship, so I stopped everything to be with him when he asked me to marry him. And it was beautiful for the first three years. And once I got to know his background and who he really was, like, you're really a street guy. Like, you know, I, I love it because you can protect me, but at the same time, I'm like, I have to really try to adapt and blend in with him, his family, and, you know, the whole being. Uh, so, tell me what the major problem with his family is. For instance, uh, there was a time we went on a date together, and then it became a couple's date. It became, well, let me invite them, and we can have a good time. It's like, they're always there. Right, you know? right, um, right. There's no time for me, you right, know? Right, right. Um, and me and him to really try to... Uh, build a, a foundation. As a couple, he's As always couple. inviting the family. Now, 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 just relax a little bit and think it through. Is it a, a fact that you often invite your family members to come along 
when, in fact, maybe the two of you should be spending time alone? Well, we spend time alone. I feel we spend a lot of time alone, Your Honor. I feel like some, some events, you know, right. maybe that particular event she talking about, I did probably invite people, but I be feeling like the more the merrier. Because sometimes we'll go out, like we went out just, just me and her. This was not too long ago. And mm -hmm. she'll wander off, just start looking and... And I get the wheel walk together, and then I get next thing you know, I turn around. She I'm gone. Like, she gone. Where you? And she, I'm like, why you didn't wow. tell me you stopped? She's like, oh, I just wanted to watch the waterfalls and all. Well, well can we do it t together? Let, let me ask you. I want to get on, on, on more solid ground. You have concerns about how much money he gives his family, right? Yeah. That's I'm name. worried about Let's that. Be tell me Let's about be that. that. Let's get to that. I feel like they treat him like a personal ATM. <laughs> you know, um, my children can be in need of something our children can right. be in need of something. Um, they can, they want to sign up for a baseball game just recently, a, a baseball team. You know, they want to play baseball. And it'll be like, no, we have to shut that down because uh, we can't afford that right now. But as soon as family calls and needs money for books, it's, um, can you put money on my bill? Can you, uh, how you doing today? No. But can I borrow $20 at the end of the conversation? You know, no. I mean, we it's need true, your family but... always need begging that. on it. That's true, but. You know, I got a list off. How many emergencies does your family have? I mean, is, you, is it an emergent kind of family? Like every every week, somebody got a crisis. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> every yeah. week there's a crisis. Yeah, you can wean those people off you. I ain't gonna say I give in every week, though. But I, I, I can I, say they know who to come to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Mr. Burnett, I'm, I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. You say you don't really trust her, and I want to know why. Mrs. Burnett, that came out here quoting scripture. Can you tell me what happened? They were too close. These folks were in our bedroom. They were always at our house. They were always spending the night. So I got tired of it. And when he left me for the last time, I said, OK, well, this is going to be a revenge. So, Mr. Burnett, why do you say you don't trust your wife? Well, I got trust issues. I trust real hard. But the reason why I think my recent trust issues been so pressure on her is because uh, an event happened and she, I found out she had a fur with a family member of mine. Mrs. Burnett, that came out here quoting scripture. <laughs> Can you tell me what happened? What happened was they were too close. These folks were in our bedroom. They were always at our house. They were always spending the night. So I got tired of it. And when he left me for the last time, I said, OK, well, this is going to be a revenge. When to he left show you? you, he left me. Before this even happened, he was very skeptical of me and the family relationship. I would tell him, like, they're flirting. You're, you know, your family is very, they say one thing one minute, but behind your back, this is what they're doing. And I've been trying to warn him about that. So this particular time, he left. And I stayed in the hometown, and I did that you know, as a revenge. It, I admit nothing to me. I did that to show him that this is the reason why we keep separating, because of family. Give me some examples of the, of the manner in which his family intercedes or, 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 or gets into your life. Tell me what goes on that you shouldn't think should be going on. Gatherings every weekend. Um, like, if someone needs a place to stay, they're always welcome to come into the Burnett's house. You know, uh, we got a couch for you, we got a room for you. You can eat here, you can sleep here, however many days you need to. Yeah. And you loaning money, you, you, you're you making them too close and comfortable to your wife. When we're supposed to have this castle, in my eyes, uh, untouchable, you know, we're trying to build something, but you keep letting them in. It's kind of... It's very you. condescending when he does that, and it, it, sends me, it sends me the wrong messages. For instance, if he has studio sessions, once, you know, once we had our own studio and everything, and he was rapping, uh, I was singing, and things like that, like, he'll invite them in. It would be free studio time, or, and then they'll spend I the night, understand. and it's just too much for your wife. And I was trying to let True. him know that mm -hmm. in a way that I could, but he wasn't listening. You be drinking, they get in trouble, you know, it's, 
things that I have to yeah, sit with him. You guys had a him. culture clash going on <laughs> because of the way his family conducted business. They were the drop by, lend me a dollar, I'll stay here flip flopping and all that kind of family. And that's not how you were raised. And yeah. Is that accurate? It's is, true. Is, is, well, is, she's, is, everything she's touched on is true, uh, Your Honor. But to all, in, in a way, when you say she say the weekends thing, and it was clearly business, like uh, music. I got so, you. It was just about that. So it wasn't like, oh, okay, we having this big old house party no, every weekend. No, I, 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 I understand very clearly what's going on, and I understand both of your points of view. And, and we're going to discuss that momentarily. Before we do, however, I do want to touch on the issue of your temper, because I do understand it is so bad that you were court-ordered to attend anger management, and I want to oh. know why. What do you need from him right now that I could possibly deliver to you? I think now she gets more anger now. I the fact that, that he cuts me off and doesn't even she, care to listen. Her anger. You can did help you me see, with Did that. you hear what just happened there? I heard what she said, but she. But I you don't want to throw that point out there. Uh. What happened that caused you to be court ordered to anger management? Well, I did something uh, that I regretted. It was due to my temper. I've been in the anger management before the end. Mm -hmm. I never had no, like, father figure to, mm -hmm. you know, help me deal and control with some of my emotions and well, my that feelings. That is no excuse. Can you give it's not me an excuse, but can, it's me, can you give me an idea what you did? Because I don't okay, know what yeah, you're well, talking about. The main thing I did, I, I uh, took something from a person, took this person's belongings, not to the, took his belongings and, you know, physically Tore him up? Him. Yeah. So threw okay. him around, took his stuff. Yeah. Police yeah. got involved. Yeah, it, w it was just a hot mess. It was a mess. I was younger. Yeah. Uh, I did Volatile. My yeah, hot, young. And then, and not only that, just being in, like she say, I grew up in the, like, in probably the street. streets. The streets, like. right, yeah. So, so game so. members. It's how that. you conduct right. business is a whole different way of, uh, yeah. Now today. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I'm with today, you. I'm, I'm with a different you. person. Ms. Ms. Burnett, has he graduated? Has he, he, he came up from a circumstance that was a little muddy and, 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 and lumpy and bumpy, but has he become a little smoother as time has gone on? Yes, um, sometimes, you know, he's learned to cope with his anger through that anger management. And I've walked him through it. Like, we would do yoga together. We would exercise together. You know, we would go back to church and, you know, uh, just try to fill our temple with something positive right. and he's done way better with that and I give him what that. What do you need from him right now that I could possibly deliver to you? I think now she gets more anger now. I the think fact that, that he cuts me off and doesn't even care she, to listen. Her anger. You can did help you me see, with Did that. you hear what just happened there? I heard what she said but she but I you don't, don't want to throw that point out there because I think that anger from the past is now she become more of an aggressive one. You know, it's like two lions in a cage, like when we get upset at each other. And I'm not. And everybody's used, mad. I'm not used to, you know, somebody coming at me forcefully. And I don't know how to act, react. And like, I ain't gonna say I ever. I never put a well, later finger on. If you put a cat in the corner, but, it's gonna come out scratching. Tell me about when he made you quit the choir. Uh, just. You know, uh, just being too controlling. I'm not there all the time uh, at home. You know, so he calls me a hypocrite because I'm basically doing things for the church. I'm cooking, you and know, and assisting night. with the church. 10 at night, yeah. Oh, sometimes well, we go no. overboard, praise the Lord. You know, well, I'm not out doing be anything at that... Night. I don't, I don't, listen, if I'm gonna be married night, I feel like marriage is a two-way string. Like, I'm not, I want some, a woman there with me. You won't be there with the church, then you might well go be with the church. That's just how I feel. At 10 got, at night, I, you need to be a home man with me I see it. and, and I the see family. It. Took me a minute, but I see it. Mm -hmm. Tell you what I see. Mr. Burnett, I'm gonna have a conversation. That conversation is gonna be with you. However, I'm gonna take that back. I'm not gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna tell you some stuff. Okay. And I don't want you to say anything, because right. I like you. That's I think right. you're a good guy. I think you got a fantastic wife. I think you, your problem is you, ha you don't have the appropriate script to read off of. You were raised in a choppy lifestyle. And I know the culture class that you were having because 
when you're raised in that kind of choppy, disassembled lifestyle where everybody's hanging out and people drop by and everybody groups up and gets all that kind of stuff and everybody's having a crisis and you pass around money and you loan your car and he needs to flop over here. That's how you conduct your business. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But once you get married, you and your wife have to sit down and decide what kind of life you're gonna live. Because for a lot of people, including me, I'm not a drop-by kind of chick. I don't care who it is. I don't care in my family, if you gonna wanna come by, you got to call. And if you need some money, I'm not your girl. I know I got a lot of it, but it's mine. <laughs> and, and hallelujah. <laughs> I work for it. So if I want my dollar over here, that's where I'm going to put it. And, and, and if you come from a family where that's not how you do business, uh, it drives a person who doesn't do business that way absolutely mad because she feels like she's not in control of her own circumstance. She feels that, that, that the walls are down in her house and she's exposed. She can't control her own space. That doesn't make you a bad guy, but it makes the two of you uh, on a different playing field. I wrote a book called Making Marriage Work, and it's about how, when you get married, how you change how you have a conversation and conduct your business, the conversations that you need to have to make everybody comfortable. I think you're a good dude. I like you, too. Thank you. But you got to give her a chance That's by right. giving her some calm and some peace in her own home. And don't think of compromise and requests as weakness. Think of it as strength. Anybody can be loud and burly and with it, but but it takes you, it takes a real man to say, hey baby, what do you need? Okay, cool. I'll do what you need before I'll take care of what I need. You can't you can't be a weak guy and do that. And and I'm gonna ask you to be a strong guy to keep this beautiful woman that you got in your household because you're a good dude and you deserve to have a good marriage. You with me on that? Yes, I'm gonna send you to somebody to get you started, but good luck. I'm gonna check up on you because I think you're good people. You just need a new script to read from. Best of luck to both of you. This matter is a I think we might have to go our separate ways. I don't think he really understands the concept of family and control issues and anger is just really torn a hole between us. I came here wanting to save my marriage, but if it's not working or if you feel like it's a hostile, most of the we need to save each other from maybe save each other from being married. today on Divorce Court. I'm in Divorce Court today because I thought I was marrying Mr. Right, but he turned out to be Mr. Wrong. I would describe Kimberly as selfish, lazy, delusional, and narcissistic. The money has stopped and the drama with his family has began. It's just become horrible. Kimberly's relationship with my family is so toxic that if it had a fume to it, then we would all have to clear the room right now. I didn't marry his family, and he needs to stop them from interrupting our marriage. In order for me to stay in this marriage, Kimberly would basically have to turn back time. I feel that my relationship is started as a love bomb, but now the affection and the attention has just completely disappeared. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Kimberly Tizeno and Willie Bessler. The two of you, get this, have been together for six months, Married for three months, you're already here to get a divorce. So, uh, and Ms. Tizena wants transitional support. So I'm gonna start with you, Ms. Tizena. Why don't you tell me how this happened? Sure, let me tell you first how we met. Um, I had just moved to Vegas. I wasn't having a lot of luck in the dating scene. Most of the guys in Vegas were like really cheap, didn't want to take me to nice restaurants. So I decided to be spontaneous one day and I put an ad on Craigslist, mm -hmm. just asking for a date on Friday night, just somebody to take me out to a nice restaurant and enjoy their company. So Willie responded. Uh, we exchanged numbers. We had a conversation on the phone. He sounded very intelligent. Uh, we talked about restaurants and gambling. I just thought this is the perfect guy. 
Um, so shortly thereafter, we set up a date for the very next day. We went to a really, really nice restaurant. Um, after the restaurant, he took me gambling. He gave me money to gamble, which was like unheard of for a guy from Vegas. So I was really, really liking it. After that, we went out continuously every day to casinos. We would do staycations in nice hotel rooms. It was, it was like a fantasy. One day, he told me that I would be his wife, and I just kind of laughed it off like... How long had you been together We had only been dating that? for like two weeks at that point. And I was like, yeah, he's joking. Um, but we continued seeing each other every single day, going out, just having lots and lots of fun. And then he brought it up again, and I told him that typically I don't date men with kids. He has three adult children. He told me, oh, no problem, my children are adults, they don't really bother me, they live out of town, so you'll never have to have any interaction. I'm very selfish. I want my husband all for myself. That's why it's I married nice him. It's nice to be self-aware. <laughs> it really is. If you're selfish, you, you need to know. Yeah, and I know that, and I told him, and he was like, he, he was okay with it. So, um, after we went on dates, I really became really comfortable with him, and I saw myself wanting to be with him forever, if that type of treatment would last. Mm -hmm. so, when... so, 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 Mr. Be Belser, let me ask you this. It, so far, is she accurate with what she's told uh, me? For the most part, it wasn't every day. Um, there, we were together every other day because she had to rest every other day. She had to rest from the whining and dining? From, from us spending time together, she had to rest every other day. Now, so. you're a disabled vet. You could keep yes, going, but she had to rest. Well, that is true. I had to get my beauty rest I, on I some have days. multiple sclerosis, and I... Uh, I, I require west, rest because of my di disability. MS, right. But I can go twice as much as her any day. Right, okay. That, that's true. <laughs> what did you see in her in two weeks that made you tell her, you're going to be my wife? Judge Toller, she was so awesome in the beginning. Um, she's a beautiful <laughs> lady. <laughs> we, uh, we spent four hours just talking in the uh, restaurant. And I mean, there was some, it was some little silly things that happened. Like, uh, I didn't get a chance to change my pants before we, we came out and I had on some sweatpants. So I, I changed my pants in the car while she was standing outside. I was like, if I would have known that things were going to go this well, I would strip it every first date. <laughs> but, that was funny. Um, she, she just showed me so much attention. She showed me that she cared. You know, uh, she was giving me everything that I needed. I don't know if it was because of me coming from an emotional place. Uh, mm -hmm. I had just lost my youngest daughter in oh. January. She was uh, 17. She died from a rare blood disease. I'm so very sorry. Yeah, but uh, she she was filling the void that you had I the needed. right woman at the right time with the, exactly. with, with, with the right amount of joy and love. You say that the moment he said I do, Everything changed. What happened? Everything changed. For me, the pivotal moment was, I'm now your wife. I need control. So I asked for his phone. I started going through his phone. I started seeing text messages, messages from his daughter. She has kids. She has a baby daddy. But she's asking my husband for money on a regular basis. And not just small amounts, like anywhere from a couple hundreds to a couple thousands. And not only her, but also his ex-wife is also texting him and asking for money and messaging him on Facebook. And so when I confront him about this, he's like, this is my family. I have to have a relationship with my ex-wife in order to have a relationship with my adult kids, which I don't understand. And he was just like, it's not going to change. Let me ask you a question. You said, I am now your wife, so I need control. Did you have any inkling that he was doing anything wrong before you decided to go through his phone? No, not really. I'm just a very curious person. But you, you just felt person. that was your right. Yeah, yeah. As, as wife. Mr. Belser, what is your uh, take on what happened after you said I do? I didn't really feel like, you know, anything changed as far as what I was doing. The only difference was she saw texts of things that I was already doing before right. we got married. And you stopped mm -hmm. spending money on me as much. Yeah, we stopped that, going you, out. Did, did that... Why don't you tell me? You, you say the whining and dining stopped, it the gambling, what happened? So I put two and two together after reading those texts. I'm no longer getting as much because his daughter is asking for money, his ex-wife is asking for money, and that's taking money away from the household and Mr. me. Mr. Belser, did you... Once you got married, did you stop whining and dining her? No, ma'am. I have a totally different take on what happened. Tell me. Kimberly 
after reading the text, started he, she, like she said to you, she put two and two together. She has a tendency to jump to conclusions. Because I am disabled, because of all the things that I was doing, she would say stuff like, well, we need to put together a savings, and I don't want you doing this, and I don't want you doing that, because I feel like it may hurt you. And I said, you know what? Just be who you were when we met, and everything will be fine. That's you you just point. stay the way you were. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, it was more like her, her own concerns and her own jumping to conclusions that led her to believe that things had to change and therefore she changed the way she was. Mm -hmm. I didn't change what I would do for her. Kim Kimberly knows that I would give her anything if I could, but I didn't try to give her any less and I wasn't giving her any less than she asked for. But she found out you had more, so she was entitled, she felt entitled to that increase. Uh, I don't really have a lot, Your Honor. Yeah. I, I'm just a very thrifty gentleman. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, so, mm -hmm. you know, our, our motto is uh, adapt and overcome, and that's what I do. Right? He was a Marine. All right, Doug. All right. I got a picture of the beginning and the whining and the dining and the perspectives of both parties with regard to that. But now I want to talk about the duties of husband and wife and how you feel that those things weren't being met. He suggested that one of his friends move in and do those things for us. And I was completely in agreement. I don't have to cook or clean and she'll do it, sure. So <laughs> she moves in. But little do I know, this friend who is only supposed to be cleaning and cooking, she's always also trying to take my husband. Now, Mr. Belser has indicated that he's unhappy or became unhappy once you got married because you wouldn't do any domestic duties. You don't work outside the home, correct? That is correct. And he says you didn't do anything in it. You say, however, that you weren't the domestic type and you told him that up front. Why don't you tell me about the arguments you've had regarding your domesticity or lack thereof? <laughs> um, I told him from the beginning, first of all, there's a huge age difference. Um, I am 33, he is 46. So he has the opportunity to marry a younger woman. Mm -hmm. I hope he didn't think that just came with no stipulations. Mm -hmm. I told him that I don't cook, I don't clean, and he was okay with that. He was like, that's fine. So I guess after we got married, he noticed that I really wasn't going to do it and the house just got a little bad. So mm -hmm. he suggested that one of his friends move in and do those things for us. And I was completely in agreement. I don't have to cook or clean and she'll do it, sure. So <laughs> she moves in, but little do I know this friend who is only supposed to be cleaning and cooking, she's also trying to take my husband. Um, I what saw, was she doing? I saw a text where she said, I love you. Um, he didn't know I saw that. Um, also, one day they were in the kitchen and they didn't know I was there. She slapped him on the butt. <laughs> I went back in the room and I didn't say anything. I didn't confront them there. I went back in the room and I, I asked him about it and he said he didn't notice it, which I don't understand how he wouldn't mm. feel this lady's hand slapping him on the butt. I thought it was you because you were standing right She's there. much bigger okay. than me. Now, now, so. now, Mr. Belser, what's your, your, your uh, <laughs> take on the domestic issue? First of all, when we were dating, she did at least attempt to cook for me on multiple occasions. It wasn't like she said, I'm never going to do it. We were always dining out. Yeah, but you attempted to cook as there well. There maybe some leftovers. <laughs> and uh, Did she tell you she wasn't the domestic type, though? Did she tell she you did that? She did tell me she wasn't the domestic type, but my, my caregiver was there for that capacity. I had, I had caregivers that visited, mm -hmm. and I have a live-in caregiver. Did you expect her to become that way once you got married? Did you... I, did, I didn't change my expectations. If she would have kept doing exactly what she did when we got married, I would have been just fine. But you say she stopped. She stopped doing she anything. Stopped. Well, what she started doing was harping on every negative thing that she could possibly do. One of her favorite sayings is, marriage is hard. And my answer to her is, when you take actions to make it hard, of course it's going to be hard. Okay. The woman that you moved in is Robin Huff. She is here. So I would like to hear from her. Ms. Huff, how are you? Good. Good. Now, I understand that you were Mr. Belser's caregiver before he got married. Is that correct? Long before, yes. Long before he got married. Yes. Okay. Ms. Huff, what did you see of Ms. Tizino? What did you think of her? She puts an entirely new meaning on the word lazy. Don't get out of bed before noon. No. 
she wouldn't do lift a finger to do anything. That's she what never, you're there for. She never. <laughs> you're the maid. Stop. I am not the maid. I'm the caregiver. The His caregiver, not your I'll personal come to find servant. That out. She knew he was disabled and sick before she married him. She refuses to do anything for him. That's what you're there for. Before I got there, she would allow him to go by himself. He has blackouts and seizures. It's not safe for him to be alone, but she didn't care. She let him go by himself because she wanted to sleep. That was more important to her than his safety. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there is no love loss here. Mm. But I want to make sure there isn't anything inappropriate going on over here. So I want to talk about your true feelings for Mr. Belser and if things aren't a little more complicated than they appear. So I'm not like her. I don't have to try to earn his love. I'm not trying to get with him. I already have him. She's trying to get with him, so she does any and everything he says. Ms. Huff, let me ask you, and I want you to be honest. Do you have a thing for Mr. Belser? Would you like to replace her? Do you have a response to Ms. Huff's comments that she made about your lack of, uh, it's not just the cooking and cleaning. She says you didn't even look after his needs, his physical and health needs. What do you have to say to that? Well, with Willie, I always ask him before he goes or does anything if he's okay, if he needs my help. If he does not ask for it, then I assume that he does not need it. So I'm not like her. I don't have to try to earn his love. I'm not trying to get with him. I already have him. She's mm -hmm. trying to get with him, so she does any and everything he says. I can recall one time I didn't want to drive to a casino just because it was so late at night, and it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. He calls her Five minutes later, she's in the driveway waiting. Like, she hops out of bed. She just jumps at his every command, and I'm not going to do that. Ms. Huff, let me ask you, and I want you to be honest. Do you have a thing for Mr. Belser? Would you like to replace her? No. You never had a crush on him? No, he is like a little brother to so me. So why'd you text him, I love you? Because I love him like a brother. <sighs> like a brother. Yeah. Oh, really. Mr. Belser, I understand things got very contentious between these two and remain so. Is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. No. Why not ask Ms. Huff to leave because she is your wife? That's funny. There, there was actually a large altercation between the two of them. We, um, they were using me as the middle guy right. when something bothered each one of them. And I basically told them in a car one day, you know, if you need to talk to her about something, you need to talk to her. If you need to talk to her, uh, speaking don't, to both yeah, of them. Teach, speak right, to don't don't right. put me in the middle. But they, and they continued to put me in the middle for certain things. And there was a large altercation, verbal altercation, <laughs> between Kimberly and Robin in the hallway of my home. And basically, it was put out there. I told Robin straight up, Kimberly is my wife. If she wants you gone, you're going to have to leave. And her, she said, when do you want me to go? But her and Kimberly were talking. I did say, Kimberly, now you realize if she leaves, then some of the duties that she's doing, you're going to have to take up the slack. And then she said, well, you have a good point. There's no need for her to go. <laughs> yeah, if she can separate the two, cleaning, cooking, that is her duty, not trying to get with my husband. If she can distinguish between the two, we wouldn't have a problem. I got it. I know what's happening. I understand as you leave from this three-month marriage, you would like $3,000 in transitional support, and we will discuss that. <laughs> Ms. Huff, thank you so much for your perspective and for your care of our former Marine here. And please have a seat. And I want to talk to these two. Ms. Tazina, why do you believe you are entitled to transitional support? Well, Willie takes care of the finances. Um... When I noticed that I wasn't able to do as much, I wasn't able to gamble as much because I just figured that we were having money issues, I told him I wanted to get a job. And he told me no. He wouldn't let me use the car to even attempt to go look for a job. So I'm left without any money. He canceled all my credit cards. He took me off of the bank account. So I'm pretty much destitute. Mm -hmm. So he needs to give me that money so that I can try to get a place, which in Vegas, a place is like $800 mm -hmm. a month, plus utilities. Were you working when you met him? Hmm. Sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Belser, your response to that, did you preclude her from, actively preclude her from getting a job? No, ma'am. This is uh, taken out of perspective. What she does is she will apply and go to interviews. And she started four jobs since we've been together. 
and none of them lasted past the second day at lunchtime. And why, why is that? Because every time because I start a job, quit. he says, we have to go out of town somewhere. We've been to California, Cincinnati in like the last couple of weeks, so I couldn't work. No, the jobs, you quit the jobs before the, before the, the traveling. Trips. No, yeah. he would yeah. always tell me Mr. that we Bouncer, have. Mr. Bouncer, are you done, done? Judge Toller, I love Kimberly to death, and if she could be the woman that I met in the beginning, I would spend the rest of my life with her. But she has a level of delusion and dysfunction that is beyond tolerable. Right. So you're done? Yes, ma'am. That's game, and that's fun. Anybody can be delightful during the dating process. Anybody can be fun and lighthearted and free. But when you show up in the in the beginning of a relationship talking about what you're not going to do and let another woman in the house, all that kind of stuff, that's who she is for real. And she wants the money and she wants the swag and she wants the fun, but offers you nothing. You're disabled and you're not. she's not helping you out. She's not caring for you. Let me tell you what. Delusional is an accurate term. If you think I'm going to let you come in here, your little sad admonishments about I'm not domestic notwithstanding, you showed up not a wife, you showed up with no heart, you showed up with no care, you showed up with no concern, you did nothing for the brother, the brother got nothing from you, and you're not going to get anything from me. This matter is a game. <laughs> it clear that he really doesn't want to be with me any longer. Possibly we are going to go with a divorce. Um, if that is the case, I would definitely always want to be friends because we have great times together. We have a lot in common. So I would definitely love to have a very lasting relationship as a friend if that's all that we can maintain. I lost my daughter and a lot of family members felt that I was coming at this relationship from a place of uh, um, pure emotions, filling a void or whatever. And I don't feel that way. Um, I, I hate that I did lose my, my daughter, but Kimberly didn't have anything to do with trying to fill anything that was missing in my life from that. Today on Divorce Court. My wife is having issues with me playing video games at night and sleeping half the day. I took the video console and pawned it to get his attention back on me and his family. I don't know what would happen if I didn't play video games. Christopher would rather do anything with technology as opposed to having sex with me. In 2010, I was diagnosed with PTSD. Video games kind of helped me relieve stress so I don't have an episode. Chris and I could talk better through texting or messengers as opposed to talking face to face. It's easier for me to say it through text or message because I can't see her facial features or her emotions. I want to try to spend the rest of my life with Chris, but he needs to get on my level where he's going to get left behind. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Heather Hamrick and Christopher Jones. The two of you have been together for seven years, married for two, and you have one child together, aged four. Uh, the two of you are here trying to save your marriage. There are difficulties that you have been having, so I had you take one of my compatibility tests, and we'll talk about that momentarily. But Ms. Hamrick, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why you're here in divorce court today? Our marriage is a little rocky. My husband tends to uh, play video games quite often uh, as opposed to spending time with his family. And we're here to try to work on that and see if we can get his sleeping habits back in the court. Now, when you say quite often, what do you mean? He plays them pretty much every day when the game console is available. Every day? OK. Now, is it every day for five minutes, every day for an hour, every day? Uh, it's been up to 10 hours in a day. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> now, we're going to check with Mr. Jones to see if that's accurate. Mr. Jones, do you agree that you do, in fact, play video games 10 hours a day? Yes. That's a lot. <laughs> are you fighting and shooting? Or are you racing cars? What do uh, you doing? My, my particular favorites are the first-person shooters. Oh, first-person. So you would uh, yes. with behind the point of the guy, I got, I got sons, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. How long have you been playing that much video games? Since I can remember age three, playing Atari. Has your consumption 
of the medium been extreme the whole way through? Or is, has it grown over the years? It has grown, I guess, into adulthood. You know, I could do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and can I can ask you this. Do you feel that, as a 30-year-old man, 10 hours a day of video games is something that's appropriate to do? Maybe not in normal circumstances. Okay. What are the circumstances you believe allows this to be appropriate in the context of this relationship? I have PTSD. Okay. Are you being treated for it? Not currently. I'm in transition. Uh, we just moved back home to West Virginia. Okay. Let me ask Ms. Hamburg. Have you noticed a, uh, an uptick in his game playing, and, and, and do you see it as a function of the PTSD? And do you see other behaviors that are concerning to you as a function of his PTSD? Yes and no. Okay. I, I understand that this could be a, a coping mechanism, the gaming situation. But I don't see where he needs to game from, you know, some days he gets up noon, sometimes 4 o'clock in the evening. He'll spend a little time with us. When the sun goes to bed, he'll game all night. Okay. Sometimes, depending on the level he gets to and the interaction, if he's on Wi-Fi, he may even stay up a little bit longer Lily, playing that game. What is he not doing that you need him to do because he's spending his time playing games? I need him to be dad. I need him to be a husband. I need him to help with laundry and chase kids and mow grass. I need him to give me a little more affection and attention. Push my buttons mm -hmm. instead of the controller buttons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones, my understanding is you quit your job in order to play video games. Is that accurate? No, ma'am. Because I put a whole lot of exclamation points beside that. Because I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm all about making money. Did, did, did that happen? No, ma'am. You say it happened. I let him get it out of the pawn shop. I take his electronics sometimes and I pawn them. Sometimes I use the money for me and things that I want because it feels, makes me feel better in this situation. But he was working. He was doing great. I went to the pawn shop. We got his game console out. Two days later, he quit his job. Said he couldn't cope because he had transitioned from one section to another section and used his PTSD as a reason why he couldn't do the job anymore. And then he continued staying up all night playing games. I know you believe he has PTSD, but do you believe that he is using that as an excuse to do things that he simply wants to do and that aren't a function of his coping with that particular condition? I think that he uses my empathy and sympathy towards knowing what PTSD is to get his way to just be lazy sometimes, yeah. Though we do not at all suggest you do not have P PTSD, and I do not at all suggest I know what it's like or how it is or what it is to cope with, but do you believe that at any point in time you might be pulling out that card when it really isn't about that? It's about what you want to do? No. Never? No. Not a little bit? I, I would not use my disability as a crutch. Sometimes you end up doing that unintentionally. Can you leave your mind open to the possibility that that may have occurred? I recall going into PTSD episodes and not knowing about it. So When did you get PTSD? What was the incident that occurred? I served in Iraq for a year mm -hmm. um, in a combat situation. Right. Uh, saw things that... I could not imagine. <laughs> I, I, oh, I get that. I, 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 I get that I don't get it. And, and I want to respect that. But we do know that your concentration on video games preceded Iraq. Now, it may have exacerbated the problem or it may be the way that you've chosen to cope with it, but I just want you to leave your mind open to the possibility. And the reason I want you to be open to the possibility, because I got the man here in the courtroom. I have Dr. Stephen L. Mandel here. He is an expert on PTSD. So what I don't know, what you don't know, and what he doesn't know, he's going to fill us in on so we know exactly what we're dealing with here. Why don't you give me an assessment of what you're seeing, what you feel is going on, and how you think they can best approach the problem. Chris's devotion to gaming preceded his trauma by many decades, a couple decades anyway. Right. Mr. Jones, we were discussing your very real struggle 
with PTSD, and I don't know a lot about it, so I brought an expert in to help me out. His name is Dr. Stephen L. Mandel, and I'll ask him to come forward at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Dr. Mandel. Doctor, if you could just give me a brief uh, recitation of your, your credentials and, and what you know about PTSD, and then tell me a little bit about the syndrome and things that you think I may not understand. Well, I'm Dr. Stephen Mandel. I treat PTSD. PTSD is very frequently accompanied by suicidal thinking and by depression. Let me ask you this, uh, Dr. Mandel. You've heard the testimony here today. Yeah. You've been briefed on, on the circumstances. Why don't you give me an assessment of what you're seeing, what you, what, you, what you feel is going on, and how you think they can best approach the problem? Well, Your Honor, I was very impressed with your line of questioning. And I have a lot of respect for Chris and a lot of respect for PTSD. It's a horrible affliction. It's one that those of us who don't have it really should get that we don't get it. Right. On the other hand, Chris's devotion to gaming preceded his trauma by many decades, or a couple decades anyway. Right. It's a great refuge. Now, games are actually used in therapy, mm -hmm. in desensitization, and, and in getting people calm down. This first-person shooter thing really helps people as part of a program to relieve their PTSD. As a way of avoidance, though, it's not especially constructive. Mm -hmm. It's not therapeutic. Mm -hmm. It isn't getting Chris where Chris says he wants to be. And you believe there are other means by which he can approach this problem. And in doing so with the gaming, this is what I think, and I just want to know if I'm wrong. I believe he's self-soothing with it, and it's successful, but he's taken it to the point where the soothing part has overtaken his life and become a problem in and of itself. I think you're quite right. Oh, okay. Well, I like you already. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones, do you have any questions for him? Not really. Uh, he pretty much Did you hear what he said? He explained amicably. So. Can you hear it without it pushing buttons, without it being offensive, or without you feeling attacked? Yes. I hope so, because I know that's not my intention. I believe it's not the judge's intention either. If you get where this is in terms of enabling you to make the choices that are going to lead you forward in life, then you really can get on board with participating in getting it moderated a little. Dr. Mandel, thank you so very much. I appreciate your expertise and wisdom in this matter, and I appreciate you coming to court today. Thank you very much. Please, you can return to your seat. I'm not going to claim expert just because I listened to him. He's still an expert. But what I am going to do is try to take you on that first step past self-soothing to the extent that your family is neglected to be able to put you on a path to be soothed and to be uh, in command of the way you manage your PTSD and possibly on to new things that allows your family to thrive and you to thrive as well. Do you think that's something you'd like to do? Yes, ma'am. Well, let's work on that. But I understand that cheating has played a role in your distress in your marriage. Um, I, I can count at least four indiscretions that he's had or more. Now, now, Mr. Jones, do you care to deny that, own it, or, or, or go somewhere in between? <laughs> I want to use today as an opportunity for you to reset. And I can't fix PTSD, but I want to reset your approach to it a little bit and approach to your family, because your family is crying. Do you, know, you understand that? Yes, I do. You said something about something your four-year-old said to you, and I want you to repeat it here to him. Remember when we lived in North Carolina? What was Alden's favorite day? Sunday. And why was that? That's when Daddy was home. And now Daddy's home every day. And he still waits for Sunday. Because you're home, but you're not there. I don't want you to feel bad because of the manner in which you soothe, but I don't want the manner in which you soothe to run your life. People who end up hoarding 
or drinking or using drugs, a lot of them are soothing from trauma. And the manner in which you soothe becomes the problem itself. And I, there are places you can go and people you can see to assist you in finding a ways to soothe that allows you to be a husband and a father and a dude that has a life that has expectations beyond the next level of whatever game you happen to be on. That's all I'm trying to say. You with me? Yes, Cause I'm loving on you here. May not sound like it, but I am. <laughs> Once we get there, I'm gonna make a sharp left turn. But I understand that cheating has played a role in your distress in your marriage. And I want you to tell me who's been cheating how it's happened, and how you found out about it. We live in a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Everyone knows everyone's business, pretty much. And a friend of mine heard another female talking about how she was pregnant and couldn't find a dad. And that got rumored back to me, and it turns out that it was Christopher, who could have been the dad. And we kind of squabbled around it for a couple tries, and he finally confessed of the situation. Was that his only misstep? No. Can you give me a count, a head count? Um, I, I can count at least four indiscretions that he's had or more. Now, now, Mr. Jones, do you care to deny that, own it, or, or, or go somewhere in between? <laughs> I only recall two. You only recall unless, two? Unless she's <laughs> counting the times with that certain person. Now that we've gone there, let's go here. Not only has he cheated on you, my understanding is you've cheated on him oh, and yes. more than once. So that's what we're gonna talk about now. <music> Ms. Hamrick, Mr. Jones says that you, you slept with his nemesis from high school. <laughs> How did you pick him and why'd you do it? I did sleep. Ew with a, a friend of mine. He's never done anything bad to me. Now him and Christopher didn't get along. That's okay, that's him and Chris. They're not sleeping together. He was my comfort. Why did you feel that it was okay for you to have sex with somebody else outside of your marriage? Was it a revenge cheat? Yes, partially. Before Christopher and I got married, when we had our son, we decided to get us a place. We finally acquired us a little trailer, had us a little home, all of a sudden, about three months into it, Christopher said he didn't know why, but he didn't want us there. So we moved. Well, we were still trying to work it out because Chris and I have a very long history. You know, yeah. we've, we've had it off and on right. for seven years. I told him once, if you don't give me what I want, I'll find it somewhere else. I said it in private. The second time, I said it in mutual company. If you don't give me the attention that I want, I'll find it somewhere else. The third time, I embarrassed him in front of everyone and had one of my downances pick me up at his home and take me down the road. And I got what I wanted. This is a save my marriage. I'm not Hercules, but I'm gonna lift as much as I can. The way you run a marriage is that you take it and you put borders around it. This is the country Hamrick Jones. And in that country Hamrick Jones, you bring all your problems, all your troubles, all your concerns, and you share them amongst one another. You don't take your distress out beyond the borders of the country and engage with other people with it. The deep thing I found about people in, in divorce court is they always feel justified in the dirt that they do. And I was feeling this way, so I did that thing. When you feel this way, you ought to have that conversation and determine how you're going to deal with it in the context of that confines of that marriage. Marriage is hard, but it can be a beautiful thing because it can be a place of trust and rest and comfort and calm, but not if you choose to satisfy yourself, to soothe yourself in places outside the country. Mr. Jones. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you for going out there and fighting that fight to help defend us and keep up. Thank you. And whatever, whatever, whatever you suffer from as a function of that great gift that you gave to all of us, you make sure that you don't accommodate it, you fight that too.
Computer games are easy. Fighting the real fight is always hard. And you start that fight with holding her hand, telling her what she needs, and go look for it together. We had Dr. Mandel here. He told you something. He may be able to tell you a little more. I have somebody out there who's going to give you help finding what you need in your area. But you understand that you have to fight that fight, not just soothe the feeling. You with me? Yes, ma'am. And don't be running around because you can't get at what at home. You, you take care of your business and stay with your man. You too. Keep your <laughs> extremities to yourself. And good luck to both of you. Today, new beginning, right here, right now. My best to you both. This matter is adjourned. Today in court, it was brought about my indiscretions, but people don't understand how much it's on us as the spouse, how much we go through. We walk on eggshells. We try to avoid the triggers. We protect our children. But we're still people. We still need love. We still need affection. We still need touched. And that was the goal, was to get him to see what he was doing to us. I guess we're just going to have to work on it and see what happens. Hopefully he gets his help and I behave myself. And this works out for our son. That's the most important thing. Today on Divorce Court. I want Devarius to step up and be a man. Communication between me and Latoya is not so good. It's like her way or the highway. I think his mama is jealous because she, first, she ain't got no man. I look way better than her. And she just do too much. When it comes to my mother, I put my mom first before I put Latoya first, because that's my mom. She took care of me, she birthed me, she bathed me. I'm tired of being second place to your mama, your friend. I'm just second place to everybody. I really don't see myself being with Latoya for the rest of my life. It's too stressful. I'm not trying to die. His name is tattooed on me, so yeah, he, I am going to be his wife. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Davarius Greaves Brown and Ms. Latoya Ward. The two of you have been together for six years, engaged for the last two. You have three children together, uh, but you don't know if you're going to make it, so you've come here to see me. Mr. Brown, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Y'all look sharp today, by the way. Like a you, like a little match it. Mm -hmm. got, got, got the hot pink and the red. I could never get my husband to wear hot pink with me. <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Brown, why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here today? Okay, I'm here today to get help. Uh, Natoya has got me fired from two jobs for the simple fact that she thought I was talking to other women. Um, so what did she do? How did she get you fired? She'll call the job back to back to back. Um, and my boss got agitated with the whole fact sure. that she kept calling. So she was like, I can't do this no more. You got to go. leave, you know? How did you lose the other job? The other job, I was taking, well, all of it, it was me, her, and two other females was working at this job together. And she came to the job and just went berserk because she thought I was talking to the other girl. And eventually, we both got fired from that job. Mrs. Ward, do you go crazy, call a man's job, worrying about what he's doing while he's there? Yes. How you go back? <laughs> How you gonna mess with your money like that? Because he didn't tell you that one of his stalker girlfriends was working at the um, pizza place. Oh, okay. So, um... And I came up there to fight her and him. <laughs> and was gonna fight everybody in there because he caught himself breaking up with me for, like, two weeks to go and be with her. And she was playing on my phone, telling me that, oh, they finna move together. And like I told her, you gonna always be a reject because he only contacts you when he's upset with me and things are not going good at home. Now, Mr. Brown, you left out the part where you left her for two weeks to go out with the, with the co-worker. You, you, you didn't tell me that part. No, 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 that's not true. Um, the girl started working at the job, and I told her, at least I kept it real and said, OK, this girl work here now. So she don't come there, oh, you ain't tell me this girl work here now. Nah, nah, I, I, I got girl. you, told you, and then they, but, but acted a fool anyway. Right, right. <laughs> now, I understand, Ms. Ward, you believe he got some other woman pregnant. Tell me about that. Some people had passed away. We went to a wake. 
So when we went to the way, he was supposed to go in, pay his respects, and come out and let me go in and do the same thing. He stayed in there forever. I he seen this like girl when she pulled up. She waited for her friends. They went in, they came out. She must have spotted him because she came out, sat on top of the car, and waited for him to come out. When he came out, she took off and went and headed towards him. He went this way, she came back, went around. But by the time she got around our car, I had opened up the car door, like, yeah, I'm here, what's up? For what? <laughs> For what, though? So, For which what? would scare anybody. <laughs> when she saw me... For what? But when she saw me, she went back and tapped her homegirls to bring them with her. So I got out the car, walked over to him, and told him, let's go. Because we at a funeral home, and I don't care nothing about these people out here crying or being sad, because if they walk up to me and say anything, it's going to go down right here. See? So... That's, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. So when we got in the car... That is very embarrassing. He was like, you are, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting like that? So I wouldn't say nothing. Well, I wouldn't say nothing. I'm like, nothing. He kept on nagging at me. So I'm like, OK, so you want to know what's wrong with me? Tell me why. Is a pregnant girl walking to you? She don't got nothing to say to you. What is she walking to you for? And is that your baby she pregnant with? Because when we seen her, she was not pregnant. If she was, and I, I did not know. <laughs> so how I know he didn't get her pregnant? Uh -huh. Really? She got out the gate on that one. <laughs> so that is why I overreacted. So then... So then, after the wake, he was going to hang out in the neighborhood. If you wasn't going to meet her or meet up with her to find out why she big and pregnant, why she walking up to you, you wouldn't have left me and the kids home. You would have took us with you. So he getting all nah, upset like because that. I'm snapping about why she pregnant. He driving the car like a fool, running red lights, swerving in and out of the car. So I'm like, don't drive like that with my kids in the car. So, oh, and just went to cursing and going on and on. So when we get to the car, he get out the car, leave me in the car to go up three flights of stairs with a little bitty baby and a baby that can't really walk up the stairs. I do everything so myself when she ain't done. He got out the car, standing, oh, get it, about my car, this and that, whatever, whatever. Okay, so Not I'm true. sitting there. I'm sitting, I ain't gonna move. If I'm sitting in the car, you wanna go. If I'm sitting here, you ain't gonna go. So he took off walking. So when he came back to, to get in the car, there was no tag on the car. I had took the tag off the car, thinking he wasn't gonna drive the car with no tag. He drove the car anyway. Okay, so you go to this funeral tomorrow with no tag on your car. This girl hood. This girl hood. What kind of... Do you care to respond? I, <laughs> you know, I'm not altogether sure what she said. Do you have something you need to say or...? No, no, she just, she just crazy. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now what I want to do is I want As to talk see. about the time that she packed up all your stuff and threw your stuff and you out. I, I told him to answer his video chat and I took his shirt and a lighter and told him, since he don't want to come get his stuff, watch me set it on fire. And he But hung she up, wanted me to go through all this, though. And he, he, go. he hung up the video chat. And then, after what, all did the... you expect him to stay on and watch it? <laughs> So, Mr. Brown, tell me about her throwing you out. Uh, that, that throwing me out has happened plenty of times. Um, she uh, take all my stuff, pack it up. Oh, get out, get out. OK, I'm finna get out. So I get my stuff. I'm getting ready to walk to the door. Guess what? She in front of the door. Where you going at? <laughs> <laughs> what is you talking about? You just told me to leave, so why I can't leave? Why can't I go? She want to argue and fuss and all this stuff. Well, I'm trying to leave. You just told me to leave, so why can't leave? How often does she put you out? You see... Anytime she get mad or she think I'm cheating... It's like once a month? Is it... it, it, it Bi-annually? Like... <laughs> Bi-mentally. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mrs. Ward, Ms. Ward, explain to me when, why, and how you put Mr. Brown out. I physically packed his stuff one time, and that was after Not true. this funeral situation. Mm -hmm. He decided he wasn't gonna come back. After showing out like that, on, let, let he let wasn't finish. gonna come back. So after the funeral, he still ain't come back. He didn't come back for I'm gonna say maybe a month and a half. He was acting like he was gonna come back. Then he'll do little, say or do something that'll make me mad. So I, I told him to answer his video chat, and I took his shirt 
and a lighter and told him, yeah. since he don't want to come get his stuff, watch me set it on fire. And he But she up. wanted me to go through all this, though. She and he, me to go. he hung up the video chat. And then, after well, all did of this... you expect him to stay on and watch yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. I, and then after that, I say maybe the next day or the day after, he came right back. But it's just the point. If you're going to be there, be there. I shouldn't have to act stupid for you to come. Or the kids shouldn't have to fall all on the floor, hyperventilating. She come, she come I want work. my daddy, this and that. Because she when they start aggravating work. me, that's when I start doing stupid stuff to aggravate him so he can come back because they sit there. When is my daddy coming back? When is my daddy coming back? Can you call my daddy? No, I don't want to talk to your daddy because if he wanted to talk to us, he would be here with us. <laughs> and then when I get on the phone, my baby like, Mommy, you on the phone with my daddy? No, I'm on the phone with my new boyfriend. Mommy, I'm telling my daddy. <laughs> And she so brag about this stuff, losing. though. She brag about it. I can't win for losing. Brag about so it. So if the kid's nagging at me, I'm nagging at him. Why didn't she come back at all? <laughs> <laughs> Came back for the simple fact, for the simple fact that my kids, um, even if they with me, they ask for her. And I get, I got, I get agitated uh, hearing that, so mm -hmm. I just, okay, come on, kids, let's go see mommy. And if sometime you want to come home and bring a little sanity into the home, right? Or, or does that never happen? I try. I you try. try. I you try. try. You try. Now I understand, Ms. Ward, that you want Mr. Brown to be a stay-at-home dad. So mm -hmm. I and yeah. you and Mr. Ward, Mr. Brown, you say she makes it impossible. So I want to understand just what's going on. I understand that a huge issue in your union is his mother. Yes. Since we're talking about him, let's meet him. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. She lying. She lying. She lying. She lying. Ms. Board, explain to me why you want Mr. Brown to be a stay-at-home dad. Because he needs to see how it feels. I understand I that it might not mind. be a right thing because we both need to work. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that I might not make enough money, but it's just the point. I'm not quitting my job. He can go back to work, but I'm not quitting my no, job. You want to go back now? Your job so, as stay-at-home mom. I oh, quit that. Oh, you quit that. Now, now you're working, mm -hmm. yeah, and you want him to be work. a stay-at-home dad yeah. because I don't feel he's gonna last long. What do you mean he doesn't? He's, he's not, not gonna last. He's long. not gonna Are last sure? long. I don't think he he won't be able to be a stay at home dad for a whole year. He won't because yeah. all he does is the kids. When I be like, I'm finna go to work, they be like, No, mommy, don't leave us here, cause daddy finna go outside and we gonna have to stay in the house and he gonna be outside with his friends. First of all, so the kids don't even want him to stay at home with them anyway. They rather for him to go to work and me stay at home. So why do you want him to stay at home? Um. I was just the kids don't it. want him. He don't want it. <laughs> he never you said he ain't any good at it. He never said that he he didn't want to do it. I was only saying it to see how long what he do it and how long he will last. He make more money than me. My finances, me working is not gonna get us nowhere anyway. Which makes the it was designed to have no him sense. to be a stay-at-home dad even that much more ridiculous. It was, uh... It made no sense for the get You don't want him out in the public with women. That's yeah, you what you want. Right. You want him at home at so he doesn't talk to anybody. Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. why don't you tell me how you feel about that? Uh, I don't mind being a stay-at-home dad. Um, within the last job I had before I became a stay-at-home dad, um, like I said, I made enough money. I, I was working... 10 plus hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll come home, try to get me a peace of mind, then go in with the kids and her, whatever. And that don't seem to work. Because right. as soon as I get home, she, babe, I need this. Come do this. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. And I'm like, right. I just got home. I walk all day. I walk. Right. And it's tiring. Right, right. I understand that a huge issue in your union is his mother. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what the problem is? Okay, she always in our business, for one. She been in our business before this lady even laid her eyes on me. When she found out he had a girlfriend that was older than him and already had kids, she was against the whole thing. She didn't even meet me until I was pregnant with our first child. 
And which is how long after you were together? Um, <laughs> uh -huh. About four months. About four months. I'm not. I'm not an ordinary what? girlfriend. What? What? At all. What? At all. <laughs> At all. At all. At all. Explain to me the most problematic thing that has occurred as a function of her interference. Her mouth. What does she say? What was, what's the worst argument you had? Okay, we can start with her worrying about what I'm eating, how I'm spending money. She's upset with me because I want to eat high-end, and she doesn't like the fact that I'm spending her son money on high-end restaurants and fine spending clothing. Spending our money, the family money? Yeah, because his money is my money, so it's our money, mm -hmm. whether I work for it or not. Not technically. But and she say. feels that if I want to spend up all his money, then I need a job. Okay, and if you feel I need a job, then you should be paying for daycare so your grandkids can go to school and then I can work. Then I can spend my money and his money. That would make it better for me. <laughs> or better yet, you can give us some money and I can spend her money and stay at home and keep my kids. Mr. Brown, um, do you feel caught in the middle of your, of, of your woman and your mother? I do. Um, my mother is my mama. You know, she raised me from a baby, birthed me, took care of me when I was sick. You know, she just want what's best for me. Right. Know? And that's my wife, soon to be, well, hopefully. Gotcha. Um, well, since we're talking about her, let's meet her. Oh, Jesus. She lying. She lying. She lying. She lying. OK, she, I got it. She, she, she lying. We're going to figure out what she's lying about. Ms. Greaves, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell me your perspective on this union? My perspective is that my son wants to do very good for himself, which is what I want. She's irresponsible. She doesn't want to cook. She doesn't want to clean. He wants to be go, go to college, and there's things that he wants to do. She manipulates him. He's scared of her, probably because she's tall and he's short. And, and she doesn't want him out of, out of his sight. That's the problem. The job in terms of the restaurant that she got him fired at, she would get his cell phone and call the phone numbers. Oh, did you call my man? Did you call my man? To the point where he got fired. And there's things he wants to do, and she doesn't want him because she's insecure. She's insecure um, because all the relationships that previously that she's actually had, obviously, the men never work. They did, they made quick money. He wants to work. He's a good man. I raised him to be a man and to take care of his responsibility. That's right. Yes, man. When, when he when man. he actually got with her, because I'm a single parent, when he got with her, when you take a woman, you take the children. I understand that. However, don't come into a relationship line. She came in line. He thought she had one child. Come to find out, she had four children. So it's like, okay, so where the father's at? You want my son to sit here and help you, then you're on child support. She wants my son to marry her so that he can help pay her child support. Unacceptable. That's your responsibility. Okay, first off, let Not me get you straight. If we want to get married to Jan Lamar, no. honey, that, that, yeah, that, the word is there. The word is there. Let her We're going to get married because one thing about it, that's mine. No. I already done told you he's my man and this I ain't going no more. Mm. Girl, whatever, because mm. like I said, you fake. You see him saying, your grandkids, he has responsibilities. What do you do besides try to meddle in somebody's business? You need Why? to get a man no. of your what? own. Stop. You need to get a man of your no. own, because from my understanding, oh, for, I, I, the, last past, for the last past six and a half years that we have been together, I have seen her. She just previously got a man. So before she got that man, no, she I didn't have a man. Had, he found me. She I has not had him. a man since Jesus died on the cross. And when was that? When the last time you were in the church? What you know about Jesus? One thing about it. Um, like I said, she can't Control do. It. She can't do for him. Yo, what would I you can like do. To, to go yeah, over please. there okay. and, and 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 calm everybody down? Obviously, we are in the smack dab in the middle of some hot ghetto ratchet mess. <laughs> no, cause she ghetto and ratchet. And there's no way in the world I can conclude this matter under these circumstances. And I just don't have the time, so I'm going to adjourn this session, and we are going to have to return on another day to find out just what the heck is going on with you people. This matter is adjourned. 
it got so bad one time she to the fact that my son had to be in the hospital because she was driving him crazy to the point where he had to be hospitalized mm -hmm. and she had yeah. to be banned from the hospital. My four-year-old comes back home and says, oh, mommy, I was told that you're a bad mommy. Not true. Daddy is a bad daddy. Your mom moved the truck, so now I'ma just cut the tires. So now you can't move. Insecure. Ms. Ward, you run fully and completely on your emotions, and mm -hmm. you frighten me with that.